fish cookies. Okay, and we are going to learn a little bit today about catfish and about fishing and about the river and some things like that that we have right here around us. And the person that wrote this book happens to be from right around here in Lawrence, Kansas, the lady that wrote this book. So that's kind of neat that a local person did the book. So we are going to learn a little bit about catfish today, and we're going to talk a little bit about fishing. Now, before we really get into the story, this is called the cast of characters, and we're going to find out who's going to be in the story. Now, as you can see probably just by looking at the pictures, they're fish. But there's certain kinds of fish, okay? Like this one, this is Rippler. And we're going to talk a lot about Rippler today. Rippler is a blue catfish, okay? He's going to be kind of the main character today in our book. And then down here, we have a couple of his friends, Stinky and Slimy. And they are channel catfish, so they're a little different. When we they they, taste like stuff. they do kind of. Yeah, and we're going to learn about a fish that really eats dirty stuff here in just a moment. And the king catfish, this big one, is called a flathead because his head's kind of flat. And you'll see that a little bit more. Now, this guy is what you were talking about. This guy is a common carp. And carp fishes, we'll learn about them. They're kind of on the bottom and eat stinky stuff like you said. Okay, so we're going to talk about all these fish today. Okay, and we'll hold this up so people can, you know, everybody can see. Okay, so the story opens up here. Under the dark gray waters of the Kansas River lived a little blue catfish whose name was Rippler. He was a small fish with tiny fins and stubby whiskers. His tail was less than perfect, tattered and full of stickers. Okay, so there's Rippler. And he has a tail that has stickers on it. Okay, now here's some others. Stinky and Slimy lived there too. They were ill-mannered bullies through and through. They loved to bite at Rippler, pecking and pulling his tail. Rippler felt tiny, unloved, unimportant, and frail. So they were the bullies, those two guys. Swishing their tails from left to right, they teased as they swam with arrogant might. They swam for the king, who'd soon choose the best to come feast at Rock Island by royal request. The king, remember we talked about the king, the king was the largest and strongest flathead. He was sleek, he was shiny. He was very well fed. The king's belly was white and covered with scars. He'd won many battles fighting turtles and gars. So he is the king. What, what are gars? Gars are another kind of fish. No, like they're long. They're long. You're right. They're long Wait, fish. I know gars what are. Gars. I know what gars are. What? Gars are unlike um, a type of fish, and they have this pointy nose. Pointy nose. Yeah. My dad caught one. He did. Yeah. Did he catch it in the Kansas River? Around um, here? He caught it down by Abe and Jake's. Abe and Jake's on the river. That's right. Um, okay. Rippler soon realized he'd never outswim the larger, stronger fish who liked to tease him. He knew he would never join the king for this honor. But he would live out his days eating grubs from the water. So down in the mud of the river beneath, Rippler laid down his head, and he fell into sleep. That night, as Rippler came into a dream, he saw himself swimming, strong, speedy, and lean. He dreamt of swimming fast, as fast as the current. He dreamt of now being completely determined. So he has this dream, and he's pretty determined right now. What does determined mean? What does determined mean? Does anybody know? Okay, determined means that you really want to do something. Oh. Yeah, and you, you just you tell yourself, I can do that. 
That's like, called being determined. It's, it's like, like, like the king, if he was going to fight a fish on his birthday, if it was today, because I think it would be today, like my birthday is today. Oh, your birthday's today. Yeah. Well, happy birthday. That's special being the last day of school. Yeah. His dream took him swimming up and down, to and fro, to the Bowerstock mill where the wheels spin below. That's right here in Lawrence. He swam to the sandbar near fishermen who cast out their lines with a wink and a grin. His sleep ended sudden with a loud happy sounds of the fish in the river just splashing around. Awake and determined, he wanted to play. Rippler discovered his true talents that day. With great speed and agility, he sped round the rocks, then up to the river bank where the boats dock. Okay, so he came out of his dream. He burst into laughter and began to sing, for Rippler now knew he could do anything. King Catfish now noticed, and he gave out a wail. Who's the little fish with a small tattered tail? Pride fully swimming up to the king, Rippler imagined a meal of truly yummy things. King Catfish and Rippler set off for the feast. There were no better swimmers in the west or the east. Okay. Down to the dark coves deep under the dam and along the sandy banks of the river they swam. Then onto Rock Island, where what did they see? The fishy feast of goodies was hidden under a tree. The feast was amazing with fat worms and big bugs, <laughs> sand toads and night crawlers, and even some slugs. Yeah, it's the stuff that fish eat. But, uh, but of all of King Catfish's wonderful goodies, Rippler's favorite by far were the catfish cookies. Catfish cookies. Okay, that is the end of our book. But let's kind of go back and look at a couple other things here. You guys ask about the gar. Here's a picture of a gar. And see, you were right. Can you see him back there? He has real long kind of nose, real pointy it's nose. It's kind of like a swordfish. Yeah, kind of like a swordfish. It's kind of like a swordfish. Fish, but the swordfish has a pointy nose, and it's a bigger one. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet the swordfish can kill. He uses his nose so he can kill other fish so he can eat them. Yeah, yep. And this says, uh, Gar live in shallow, slow-moving waters, such as along sandbars. And they have armor-like scales, so their scales are, are real thick and long tooth-lined jaws. So that long snout on them, they have a lot of little teeth in there. Yeah, they kind of use it for sucking that thing. Yeah, so can survive in shallow water because they can actually close their gills and breathe air. So they're not like other fish whose gills go back and forth. They, they can shut theirs. Mm -hmm. Females uh, can live more than 20 years. So they live to be pretty old. And males usually live up to be about 15 years old. So, and they're frequently found in the Kansas River. And it says, this ancient species has even outlasted the dinosaur. So Whoa. these gars, you know, have been around a long time. Okay. Um, zebra, big, shark says oldest fish ever. Oldest fish ever, yep, probably <laughs> so. Yep. Yep, that's true. Okay. Now, we can kind of go back and talk a little bit about the main characters here. You know, when we were talking about Rippler, and he, he was a blue catfish. It says, uh, Rippler's blue catfish. It's the largest native fish species in North America. And in Kansas, they're only naturally found in the larger rivers where they can swim in deep, swift channels. You know, like the Kansas River here. The largest blue catfish that was caught in Kansas was found in the Kansas River, and it weighed 94 pounds. Whoa. Yeah. That's it's almost as big as me, just about. And it was almost five feet long. See, and I